Hello, and welcome to the Buy, Sell, Hold Spotlight presented by Sports Car Market Magazine. I'm Darren Roberts. Before we begin, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to join in the conversation and share your thoughts by leaving us a comment below. Our guest today is Dan Ritapecki. He is the auctions director for the Saratoga Motor Car Auction, the Naples Motor Car Auction, and the Saratoga Automobile Museum. Uh, welcome, Dan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. For those who may not know you, may not be familiar with you, why don't you give us a little bit of background on yourself? Uh, so uh, I've been in the uh, the automotive business for many, many years. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was approached on uh, coming on board full-time and helping here. So I started as the assistant auction director, and I inherited the position um, as of last year. And so uh, we had a successful auction last year. We went on to Naples, did well, and just completed our 2022, our sixth auction here in Saratoga. You got a lot on your plate. So what does like an average day look like for you? Uh, it, it's busy. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of questions, a lot of phone calls. Um, you know, it's, it's basically myself and Molly, you know, so lots of questions, lots of running around, lots of visits. Um, but it's good. I mean, we definitely love cars. Um, you know, we, we love what we do. So even though it is a lot of work, it's a lot of fun and we're definitely, you know, very fortunate to be able to interact with great people and very cool cars. Yeah, you kind of get to do a little bit of everything. I mean, you have the auction component as well as the museum component. So I imagine that keeps you on the road on a pretty regular basis. Definitely. Um, you know, we we technically for uh, for Saratoga and stuff, we kind of look at like a 300 mile radius and stuff. And we do, you know, we do make a lot of visits. It's always good to, to lay eyes on a car, meet a person, you know, address and help them understand the process. Um, and it definitely helps us with assessing the value in the car and the fit. Um, and then once we complete this, it's, you know, every other week down to Naples and kind of do it all over again. So it is quite a bit of travel, although it's nice. I mean, it's a great place to be for the winter. Yeah, no, you can't really complain about having to go down there. It's, uh, it, 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 uh, it is one of the places to be when it gets uh, cold everywhere else for sure. And, and relationships really are the key component of this business. So it, it's a, it's a strong, uh, strong thing to, to be able to go out and, and actually accomplish that. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about the, the museum, the history, the overview, what the mission is? Um, so essentially the museum was founded 20 years ago. Um, I think it was to promote, you know, automobiles, you know, cars of New York, um, to promote the, the, uh, the automobile itself. And, uh, you know, the mission, there's an education component and stuff to bring in kids and help sort of expand on the hobby. Six years ago, uh, a group got together and, you know, like any, like any other uh, non-for-profit, there was a need for revenue. And that's where the auction idea kind of came about that let's have this auction and see if we can make some money. And essentially it's led into uh, year six and it's the uh, museum's largest fundraiser. So, and it kind of goes hand in hand, you know, with what the museum does um, and, and the mission uh, that it has. Yeah, it certainly supports a lot of important things going on there. Why don't you uh, kind of give us a general rundown uh, of the, uh, you know, the featured more significant vehicles and, and some of the ongoing exhibits that you have at the museum. So, so one of the great things about this museum is there is a, it's an, it's a changing exhibit. So, uh, to give you an example, uh, two years ago, we started off with rare air, uh, which were early Porsche cars, um, up until 73, um, all spectacular examples, um, on loan to us by a local collector. So a lot of four cam cars, um, an RCRS 911, uh, one of, I think, seven and the nicest one, you know, out there. Um, and then it segued into the cars of RS. So every RS car from 1973 to 2019. So it was a great exhibit because you got to see the old and where it came from. And then you got to see how it segued, you know, into modern day. Um, so that was the, the exhibit prior. Our current exhibit is cars of Radwood. Um, Radwood, as, as you all probably know, celebration of cars of eighties and nineties and culture. So there's some really cool stuff here. I mean, there's an EB 110 downstairs. There's an XJR 15, an XJS 220. Um, I think there's a cyclone pickup truck, which is kind of cool. Um, we had a Callaway Corvette, there's a Testarossa. So it's a really cool grouping of cars that you ordinarily wouldn't see. Yeah, the Cyclone and the uh, the Callaway are both very interesting vehicles for sure. I mean, those are those are cars that really, really want to kill you. So <laughs> it's kind of fun to be able to see those both be in one place and 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 uh, available to compare and contrast. And I'll tell you, the Cyclone not a particularly good truck, but man, the launch on that thing is something else. I agree. Yeah, it was definitely ahead of its time. Yeah. You know, and a sleeper because it looks like an S10 pickup truck with some you know some plastic body components. But man, is it not? It is you know the exact opposite of what you would expect it to be. 
Yeah, it's it's much more of a uh, of a performance vehicle for certain. I mean, uh, the, and again, the way that those cars launch, they're kind of not so great after about you know 60, 70 miles an hour. But especially for that era, if you really consider what they were capable of, it, it they get they get up there. I think mean, was it zero to sixty in four point three seconds or something? It's totally unheard Absolutely. of for that era. It's crazy, you know. So so really cool and, and nice to have it. And this model, of course, has you know was bought new, has no miles. You know, absolute perfect example well-preserved um, of that truck. So yeah, you can't ask to see more than that. Definitely. Uh, and of course that XJR 15, uh, uh, courtesy of cultivated collector, you've got a few vehicles from, from uh, Matthew Ivanhoe on display there, correct? Yeah. He's been instrumental in helping us out and stuff. And what, you know, what a great grouping of cars, you know, he has and what a great guy to work with. So we're very fortunate for his support. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's the next incoming uh, exhibit uh, at the museum? I don't know if I'm allowed to say uh, it's, it's under wraps, but I can give you a hint. Um, it, it has a uh, Aston Martin component. Um, so I don't know that we've made the official, you know, it'll, it'll be officially unveiled in the days to come. Um, I don't know how soon this airs, if, <laughs> you know what I mean? In respect to uh, releasing that, but keep your eyes peeled. It's a spectacular exhibit. Um, and I think people are going to love it. And I think it's going to be even more so encompassing of not folks who just love cars, but it'll bring folks in and help them appreciate cars even more. Yeah, you can't ask for more than that, definitely. Um, any upcoming events at the museum? We just hosted a BMW launch show um, this past weekend, which brought in 150 cars. We hosted um, a group of high school kids um, that are in a automotive program out of the Bronx that came up last Friday, which was great to see, you know, 50, 60 kids to walk through the Radwood exhibit and just be kind of blown away seeing cars that they've only seen in YouTube videos, you know, or on TV. So it was really cool. You know, that definitely helps with the mission of the museum and you know, helping people appreciate and understand cars and see stuff that you wouldn't normally see. Yeah, you guys seem, definitely seem to get out in the world a lot and uh, you're out helping to inspire uh, future enthusiasts and, and putting cars in front of people in a, in a capacity they may not be uh, familiar with uh, on a regular basis and normally. Uh, let's talk the auto auction. Um, obviously, you guys are well known for the Saratoga uh, uh, motor car auction. That was your uh, your first endeavor into that field, as you discussed a little bit earlier. Um so give us a little bit of history of that auction, and then we'll talk the, the most recent auction, uh, the Naples event. So, so like I said, it began about six years ago. The general idea was to, you know, have an alternative revenue resource other than just donations. Um, and it kind of worked really well with, with the museum, automotive, the hobby and such. So to originally start off, it's back. We had a couple of years there. Um, but with that schedule, things didn't work out. You know, so we, we segued into a, a variety of locations until this year where we had it at the Saratoga Casino Hotel which actually turned out to be spectacular. Uh, it was hosted in an old polo field. So great space, lots of room, um, allowed us to not only have bidders and consigners, um, but also be able to welcome anybody that wanted to come and you know see the show, see the cars. Uh, so it really allowed us to expand and make it much more of a community event. And so we love the space. Um, we're going to have to go back and negotiate and you know do a long-term deal, but we feel this is the place to hold it. And it would be great to continue so that we have consistency and it's in the same spot. It's easier for us, you know, for logistics. Um, so we're, we're very excited about that. And you guys just wrapped that sale up in uh, late September and uh, you, you did pretty well on quite a few cars. You uh, sold a lot of late model exotics. Why don't you talk about some of the top sellers? Uh, so top sellers, a, uh, there was a Mercedes SLR, uh, DBS 2009, both super low miles. Um, I think of what other, uh, we had a, an R8, I think V10 rear wheel drive car um, that did really well. We did well with a couple of older Cadillacs. Um, there was a very unique car um, that brought, I want to say, close to somewhere in the mid 70s, an Orlebar Schneider, which is like one of two uh, car designed um, for Le Mans. Never really made it, but a really neat car. Um, but yeah, overall, I think we did well. And, you know, our grouping is usually a little bit of something for everyone, you know, so you had all ranges of price points. Um, but it seemed like the, the more modern day exotics did well. We did really well with the DeLorean. That was kind of a barn find. They just kind of went through and did a starter alternator fuel pump, fuel lines, got it running. Um, and that car, I think, brought in the mid 40s, which was really, really good for, uh, for what it was. So we were very pleased. Yeah, it's a diverse offering of stuff that you guys have up there. It's, you know, Land Rovers and, and, and uh, Ferrari Testarossas and, and lots and lots of memorabilia and motorcycles, a little bit of everything. So it's a, it's a fun event that, uh, has a good cause attached to it. So, so it's something definitely worth supporting. Now, Naples, why Naples originally? Uh, so we, so a friend of our, a mutual friend of ours um, wanted to do um, an auction in, in conjunction with the Cars on 5th experience, if you're familiar with, 
which is a Ferrari of Florida club event, um, which one of the largest car shows in, in Naples. I think it draws like five to 700 cars these days, mostly Ferraris and other exotics. And so they were looking, they loved um, that we did an auction component. They felt that it would be a great added event for their um, auction ex- or for their um, experience, cars on fifth experience. And so we put it together and, you know, last year was our first auction. We consigned about a hundred and say 10 cars. Um, it was kind of done quickly. You know, by the time we got everything done, I think we didn't begin until like the end of no- um, November, beginning of December. So we had about 60 days to pull it off, but great venue, great place, great town. We partnered with St. Matthew's house, um, which is the beneficiary as well as us uh, from the auction proceeds, which is a not-for-profit down there. So really well supported, great event, great people. Um, so, you know, love Naples and we feel it's a market that it's kind of underserved. So it's, you know, we, we feel honored to be able to bring an auction component and a grouping of cars to Naples. So folks don't have to travel to Fort Lauderdale, Palm beach, Orlando and such. So, yeah, no, it's, it's a great idea to, to, uh, to link up with an event like uh, cars on fifth. It makes a lot of sense and it's a benefit to great charity as well as yourself. Um, we all know that the auction business is a year round endeavor. So if people want to consign uh, for register to bid for either of those auctions, where can they do that? Um, that can be done at, um, at our website, saratogamotorcarauction.org. Um, and it'll, it'll switch. It'll link you to you know, whichever auction is going on. So if it's August, it, uh, it'll bring you to Saratoga. If it's after the year, it'll bring you to Naples. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, both uh, but that website is, is the best place to start. Or you give me a call direct. You know, my number is easy. It's 518-369-1000. Um, and we, you know, we'd love to take on consignments, bring in bidders. Um, we're, you know, rolling into now wrapping up. I think there's only a handful of cars left and, um, that are here that have had some post sales and stuff and on to Naples we go. So we're excited. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, good cause. And if you're looking to consign a car, it's a great, great place to do it. Okay, Dan, you're a guy who is out in the world of collector cars uh, all day, every day. It is what you live and breathe. Uh, So I'm going to give you the floor here. Why don't you give us one car to buy, one car to sell, and one car to hold in today's marketplace? Wow, just one. Um, Well, I think on the buy side, I'm a huge fan of value. Um, I think anything six-speed, anything 12-cylinder, I think is a great buy right now. I think an Aston Martin DB9, to me, I think, you know, is it at a perfect price point? It's a great car. It's well built, a little bit of service, and I think it'll go a long way. Um, I also like like the R29 Mercedes line. I think those are undervalued, and I think they're they're headed on the way up. Um, on the sell side, I think 50 stuff is kind of done, like Ford Thunderbirds, um, Bel Airs, that kind of stuff. We see, I, at least I see, you know, people, you know, they used to be in the 50s and 60s. Now they're in the 30s and 40s. They're kind of a tough car. So I think that's kind of... Uh, kind of going away and then on the hold side i would say anything from the 80s you know e30 bmws i think have really climbed uh, i think we're going to see it with like e46s um i think any air-cooled 911 um and once again anything you know manual gearbox 12 cylinder i don't think we're ever going to see something like that again between emission standards and what manufacturers um are going toward so yeah I agree. I mean, I think that's the end of the era stuff for sure that uh, will will never be replicated again. And and there's really nothing like harnessing the power and the smoothness of of a V12 behind a manual transmission. So that's incredibly important. And I agree with you on the uh, the E30 side of things too. I mean, I think that's an incredibly exciting, fun little car that's reasonably reliable, that's got good support, and uh, will be collectible for for years and years to come. Uh, any final thoughts? Um, you know, I also love the Pagoda Mercedes line. You know, I think that's also at a, at a decent price point. I think it's climbing. Is climbing. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of biased with the European stuff versus the American. Um, on the American stuff, too, I mean, I don't know. We sold a bunch of Zero Ones this year, and they, were, they did, I think, fairly well. And I think that's another car that I think is a crazy car um, that's quite undervalued. You know, I think both sold in, like, the 30s. And that's a lot of car for the money. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, uh, it's a very complex engine that's very interesting to get behind. It's got a lot of horsepower. I mean, if you think about it, like that was kind of one of the cars in the early 90s. And if you look at like what Tesserosas have done and things of that nature, I mean, obviously there's a little bit of a refinement difference between those. But for twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, a ZR1 is really a cool car to, to, to buy and drive. Definitely. Yeah, I agree on the service. You got to you've got to find the right guy. I think with you know that has patience, and it's more European than it is American. But I don't think it's an insurmountable hurdle, and I think it's a lot of car for for what it is. 
options. Yeah, most definitely. So where, where can people go to learn more about uh, the two auctions and the museum? So Saratoga Automobile um, Museum.org is our website. Um, if you go to the museum website, there'll be links for both auctions and then Saratoga Motorcar Auction.org. I would like to thank my guest, Dan Ritapecki from the Saratoga Automobile Museum, the Saratoga Motor Car Auction, and the Naples Motor Car Auction for joining us today. To learn more about anything that we discussed here, be sure to pick up the latest issue of Sports Car Market Magazine by visiting the link in the video description down below. As a reminder, if you enjoyed this content, please take a moment to like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay on top of future episodes. I'm Daryl Bears. Thank you for joining us on the Buy, Sell, Hold Spotlight.